everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today's OS review, we're taking a look at Solus OS. Now, if you're not familiar with Solus, that's all right. Uh, I have previously uh, reviewed some of the older versions of Solus, but uh, uh, today we're taking a look at version 1.2.1, and you know, recently they changed their release model, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But for those of you that are not familiar with Solus, I'm just going to go right to their about page and it says right here Solus is an operating system that is designed for modern PCs every tweak configuration and optimization enables us to deliver a singular cohesive desktop experience so the key word there is desktop there is no development for mo for mobile uh, you're not going to find a Solus server so if you want a Solus server you're going to have to look somewhere else uh, it's all focused on the desktop and you know kind of looking around things look very familiar if you are coming from the gnome environment and that is because it, it very closely follows the gnome stack um, now just kind of cruising on through the rest of the about page uh, let's see where was I at uh, Solus is built from scratch, providing us the freedom to provide a single integrated experience without being beholden to the interest of other projects or corporate agenda. So we are not based on Arch, not based on Ubuntu, any of that. So like he said in, in the about page here, um, you know, it does grant them some freedom in that, you know, they don't have to follow, say, Ubuntu's requirements or if they were uh, fedora base you know they don't have to they don't have to follow the fedora wishes uh, the red hat wishes that sort of thing so it does give them quite a bit of freedom to develop the way they want and stay focused like they said on the best desktop experience that they can create while I'm on the Solus homepage I do want to point out let me go to the download page they have you know really done a good job of making the website easy so that you can get to your downloads and and whatnot just click right here for for the downloads and then it'll give you a list of various mirrors where you can download from or uh, where you can grab the torrent if you want to do a torrent download uh, and then also on the download page there is this user guide and I mean I, I downloaded a PDF copy of it went through the whole thing very well detailed um, it, it's there there's enough information there to get you going and you know point out important details and uh, all that sort of thing so definitely if you're going to use this distribution grab the uh, grab the user guide download it keep a copy of it um, and it'll it'll help you from uh, trying to search trying to go online and search for answers that you've uh, you know are already taken care of in this user guide so let's take a look at our desktop layout. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me go and point out a few details about uh, the system that I'm running on, just so that you know a little bit about it. Uh, I always do my reviews on live hardware, no virtual box or gnome boxes or anything like that. Um, the system has 16 gigs of RAM, runs the AMD 8328 core processor. The uh, the uh, graphics card is the AMD 7700HD, uh, and as you can see right here, base system is Solus 1.2.1 64-bit, and I set up a 30 gigabyte uh, hard drive partition for, for doing the testing here. Um, also, for those that are curious, we are running uh, the default kernel is now up to kernel 4.7 for those interested in the kernel numbering anyway so let's take a look at our desktop layout right here is what you see is is what's set up by default and over in the left hand corner we've got our menu you can either click on it with your mouse or you can use the window slash super key to open your uh, menu and then you know you've got categories here or um, and then right here you've got all of your uh, all your various applications and there is an option and I'll show you that in a minute you can go to a more com compact list type view um, personally I prefer this view but uh, uh, if you don't want to go with the categorized you know I, you do have that option anyway so you got that there's a couple of 
of applications that are pinned by default to your uh, to your uh, panel here and you can go and add others yourself so let's say for example let's, let's just open up our file manager okay so the file manager is open and you can see the little open thing there if you go and right click on that and scroll on down you'll see pin to panel click on that and boom it is now pinned to the panel and uh, you know that might be useful for you if you are the kind of person that uh, that likes running from a dock or that sort of thing me personally I'm a keyboard search kind of person so the fact that I can hit the Windows key and start typing whatever it is that I'm looking for you know I like that um, but you know to each time if you want to pin stuff here you can't anyway so we got the stuff that's pinned and then right next to that is all of our running applications and if you hover over the icon for the running application it'll tell you what that application is so we've got all that stuff and then over on the right hand side we've got our usual tray notifications and you can also click in here and it opens up what is known as Raven which has all kinds of functionality built into it. If you click on it, you can see that you've got um, we've got a calendar here, and then down below, you get input and output settings for uh, your audio. Go and click on notifications. You can go to your notifications. Put click on the little gear icon, and now you can make all kinds of settings changes from here. So you can go and change the uh, change the different themes um, the widget theme icon theme cursor theme all that kind of stuff uh, play around with your background your icons uh, desktop icons uh, fonts for you know your windows and and whatnot and then come over here to where it says panel and you can play around with the with the panel settings that sort of thing And uh, also, it, down here at the bottom, the little uh, this little icon right here, the the wrench and screwdriver. If you click on that, that will open up. Uh, it popped up my other display. Uh, that will open up system settings. If this looks familiar, it probably is to most of you. This is, uh, you know, essentially uh, the GNOME system settings. Uh, okay, so anyway, that anyway, there's there's Raven, uh, and then right next to it is, uh, you know, just the the time up here, and that pretty much is it for the the default layout. Very simple, but I think they've got all the bases covered. As far as package management goes, Solus has their own software center. That's what this little uh, arrow icon is right here, and right here is their software center, and compared to like say Ubuntu or something like that uh, the, uh, the the packages are fairly sparse right now now they have been adding you know ever since the project started they have been continuously adding more and more to their repositories uh, there's a lot more available than used to be um, I think uh, you know for for most people I think they've got most bases covered um, you know, under Office software, you've got you know you got Abby Word, um, Focus Writer, you know, a variety of different writing softwares, a whole bunch of different text editors. Uh, LibreOffice is included. Um, if you use um, WPS Office, that is not included by default in the repositories, but uh, there is a way to install it, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but anyway, like I said, there there's you know I think most bases are covered um, for myself for my workflow the only thing that I have found that I use on a regular basis that uh, that is missing here is Caden live and as of right now Caden live is actually in the unstable repositories it's being tested and hopefully it'll it'll moon move to uh, uh, move to stable very soon and you know like I said for me that would be the only thing that that we're missing here that uh, that I use on a daily basis um, you got a variety of different uh, you know and under multimedia and graphics you know you've got uh, a variety of different uh, audio software you got audacity ardor um, no music um, 
you know, there's a rhythm box. Um, like I said, there's not a huge number, but there is a big variety. Go under graphics, uh, you know, you got dark table, got blender, um, photox, uh, the gimp, inkscape. So, you know, they got the, a lot of the, 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 uh, uh, big players, I guess you could say the big players in the open source world. Um, you know, a lot of those are covered. Um, one thing I liked was that in here under security, if you go to security applications, I think is where I found it. Uh, they do have the Tor browser set up, uh, by default so you can go and install that uh, with a simple click and you're good to go not uh, not a lot of distros do that um, while I'm on the software center you can do all of your updates from the software center just come here to updates you can see mine's updated and I I updated a little while ago right before I started doing the video but you, know, you can go and manually check for updates give it a second boom it can't find anything new but um, you know it's nice having all that integrated into the software center the one place I did run into some glitches is in these third-party applications um, for both Google Chrome and Opera you know I tried doing the one-click install from the uh, from the software center and the you know, you had you got a message at the bottom saying that the software is installing, and it just kept going and going and going. And I mean, I walked away and came back 45 minutes later; it was still hung up. But then, you know, so I rebooted, and uh, you know, the software hadn't been installed. I went and installed Chrome via the uh, um, uh, through the terminal, and no problems there. So, uh, not exactly sure what was going on there. Um, but, uh, you know, when I, when I installed from the regular repositories, no issues at all, but, um, uh, not sure what was going on with those 30 third party, uh, uh, applications. Speaking of those, let me drag over Firefox here and on their homepage, um, They've got a list of various third-party applications that you can install and the terminal commands to go install them. So, you know, if you want to install Chrome, Opera, Vivaldi, uh, what else we got here? Uh, uh, the Google Talk Browser, Skype for Linux, Viber, Spotify. Um, you know, I mentioned WPS Office earlier. You can install that through the command line, um, a few other things. So anyway, you can go and install those uh, those third-party applications, even though they're not in the official repositories. One of the things that has very much been impressing me with this distribution is its speed. Boot times very quick. Um, on my desktop computer, it's quick. On my laptop, which is uh, UEFI, it is insanely fast. I mean, it's like blink of an eye fast. So very much like that. The uh, the uh, the other thing as far as speed goes is the speed of the applications opening up I and mean, let me go and open up the software center here and I mean you got you know essentially maybe a one second lag maybe slightly more I mean very quick now when I had previously looked at some of the older versions uh, of Solus they the the default applications they booted up nice and quick but the uh, other applications that they were in the repositories, but when I added those other applications, they didn't boot quite as fast. Um, LibreOffice was one. It seemed to take a long time to boot. Um, but uh, that really isn't the case anymore. Um, let me just, well, let's, let's go with LibreOffice since I already mentioned it. And... Um, see how long it takes here yeah I mean you got a little bit of a lag but uh, you know that's that's pretty quick there so uh, and I've been playing around with opening various applications and that and and you know just to see if you know is it true for all the applications and for the most part it seems like uh, everything is nice and snappy about the only thing that I found that uh, had, had a significant lag was Firefox and at least at least me personally I found that with Firefox on just about any distribution, so I don't really think it's an issue here in Solus. It's 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 just it's just Firefox. 
Um, but anyway, been really happy with, with the speed of the applications loading up and that sort of thing. I mentioned earlier that Solus has changed its release cycle. Essentially, uh, they used to follow a release cycle that was based on static releases, much like uh, Ubuntu and, uh, and, and a lot of other distributions where, uh, you know, in the case of Ubuntu, um, you know, 14.04 was released, and then after that, uh, roughly six months later, 14.10 was released, so on and so forth. Um, and you may have had uh, minor patches and uh, some bug fixes that came up between now and then, but essentially, um, as far as updating versions of various pieces of software, that sort of thing, um, it would not come until the next release. What Solus has done is they have changed to a rolling release model, which is what Arch Linux uses, uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, a few other distributions. In, in the case of a rolling release, as a package is developed, it's deemed stable. As soon as it's deemed stable, boom, it goes out into the repositories and the users can upgrade to, to that new release. So the, the old release numbers of you know version 1.2, 1.1, um, all of that is being dropped. So those numbers really are kind of meaningless now. You'll always be running the latest version of Solus as long as you remember to hit that little update button. For those who are fans of the GNOME shell, you can install the GNOME shell on Solus and use that as your desktop environment. Um, you know, some people like it, some don't, but uh, if you are a fan of GNOME shell, you can go and install it. And actually, I will have a short follow-up video where I will install GNOME Shell. I mean, installation is really simple, um, but I'm going to install that, and then uh, we'll just take a look at how the performance is on, uh, on GNOME Shell as compared to the budgie desktop. And uh, let me drag that out of the way. And speaking of performance, you know, everything, with the exception of that one little issue with the uh, software center that I pointed out, uh, everything has worked great. I haven't had any, you know, applications crash or, uh, you know, everything's just worked right out of the box. Um, so really been happy with the distribution. Um, you know, for a long time, I was running one of the older versions on of Solus on my laptop. I actually switched it, I don't know, maybe about a month or so ago. Um, not because there was a problem with Solus, but just because I wanted, uh, I was trying to test new distros for doing my reviews, and I switched over the laptop so I could try it out on, try something else out on the laptop. But uh, most likely, I will be switching the laptop back to, uh, back to Solus. Um, desktop, I don't know, it still kind of remains to be seen. Probably, uh, I could probably be convinced to do that if uh, if they, uh, if and when they get uh, Caden Live up and running and, and it's stable and whatnot. Um, but having said all that, I think that just about finishes this video up. As always, thanks for watching. Please share the video on social media. If you got any comments, questions, all that kind of stuff, leave it down below. I try to get to you as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.